Welcome everyone to our special Hilula of Maureen of Rabbeinu, the Balatani Akadosh, Rabbeinu Shneer Zama Miladi, uh, I believe Ben Rivka, I think his mom's name was Rivka. Zuchutu again, Amen. Amen. And today is also the Hilula of Miriam Hakoveset, a big tzadeket in the uh, 20th century in Israel, in Yerushalayim, Yerak She died without having children. So it's a very big sigula and a bracha to make a hilula for somebody who died without having kids. Because technically speaking, if we're here 50, 80 years later making a hilula for somebody that didn't have children, it's a siman that she had a big shorash neshama. <coughs> Story goes, what's hakoveset? Koveset at a cycle? laundromat. She was the laun- launderer. She used to make laundry, laundry lady for all that tzadikim inside Yerushalayim. They used to, that was her job. She used to make money. Like a dry, like a olden time dry cleaners. She used to take everybody's laundry, make laundry, and she used to give it to them. Her name was Miriam. She specifically was very close to the Hasidic court, court of the Zavil, Zavila Rebbe. Of Shlomka Mizavil. He's a very big tzaddik, he was. And he, his uh, koveset, his laundry, his laundry lady was Miriam. And she used to see miracles coming in inside his house all the time. He used to bless people, this, that. And people used to come, he had a chatzer, he had a tish, he had a courtyard, he had, he had people coming to his shiurim, to his thing. What happened was, is that she went to the Shlomke Mizavil, the Zavila Rebbe, and she said to him, Rebbe, bless me. Bless me to have a child. He always put her to the side. Kabuta bi, you know, bracha you know what I'm saying? Yeah, bua. How old is she? She was uh, getting older and older. And she always, she never gave up. Always asking, bless me for kids, bless me for kids, bless me for kids. At the end, he said to her, I can't bless you for children. She said, why? The legend goes that he told her if you're going to have a child, he's going to die very young. She said, even so, bless me. Even if, even if that's the case, yes, yeah, still give me a barakha for children. And he blessed her, and so it was. She had a child, and he died not, not uh, far off from that. Oh, before, yeah, the chi- before Bar Mitzvah, he passed away. Baby or mama? The child. Baby. The child. And ever since, the, but, she, but she never gave up hope. She still used to ask, and daven, and daven, and daven, and daven, that she should have kids, because HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he's the one with the key of the children. As the Gemara Masech it says, three keys are in the hands of Hashem. Zivug, Parnasa, and children. Three keys are in the hands of Hashem. Nobody could grant you these three things. Only a Kadosh Baruch. Connect. Only Hashem. Hashem signs off. There is a Malach in Shamaim. His name is Safrikel. Safrikel. When we do in Aseret Yemesha, we say, Ose Ha Shalom Bim Roma. Why do we say, Ose? <laughs> Ha shalom mimama, because the Ari says there's a malach called Safrikil, and his name, I'm not saying exactly, I'm saying Saf, it's a really an Aleph Lame, and he has to sign off on all your, all your uh, deeds. You yeah, you don't have, I don't know, yeah, I'll say it to you, when you say, I'll say ha shalom, that's his number. Okay, so, uh, so, the, the, so she still used to pray. She never had kids, she died childless. She's buried right next to Ravitz Hakaduri, maybe a five minute walk from Ravitz Hakaduri over there. Up the uh, up the mountain in Haram in She, have, she, she had a kid, according to one legend, she had a kid. According to another, she never had any kids. Whenever a person used to come to the Zavila Rebbe, he used to say, Bless me with children, he said, Don't don't come to me. Go to her. She has the power, she has the key, she has the formula to bless a person with children. Why? But she never had children herself. The answer is, all your tefillah don't go to waste. Really? Person who davens for zivuk, davens for parnasa, davens to be, I don't know, big tamid chacham, whatever he davens, the yaladim tzadikim. How much our boys have we have to daven that we should have yaladim talmidei chachamim and tzadikim. Even not talmidei chachamim, they should be tzadikim, kiddushim, tehorim. It should be Yiladim, Shomrei Torah, Shomrei Mitzvot. Yiladim, I have a tefillah, says that our children should, that they should listen to their teachers. Amen. Our teacher, uh, children, that they should listen to their parents. Amen. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a blessing to have a child like that. How much we have to daven for that? It's, and if a person davens for a, a lot for one thing, it doesn't happen to him. 
he gets the power to bless other people to have that. Why? Sometimes you don't have the zikhut. Why? You have a tikkun to do in this world. You have to suffer. Why? In the last Gilgul, you made your teachers uh, over there. Uh, uh, you let out the, the atomic bomb. You let, you let out the schnitzel. You let out the schnitzel. In that case, the Chachamim say a person must suffer. A, merc- a person, put your hands down. Person, a person must suffer in this world. Why? Why does a person come to a Gilgul? Whoever goes to Shara Gilgulim. Why does he come down to this world? To fix, to relive those opportunities. I was teaching Shara Gilguli, and we, are, we were in Shiur number, Gabriel, nine, nine. right? Number yes, nine. nine. To be to your zechut. To your zechut. We were in uh, Shiur number nine, and we said over there, a person could switch his Shorish Nishama. How? If you do a mitzvah or a davar, a tzedakah, uh, a, a, a Torah, a, a something, a chesed, something big like a certain tzaddik that from a long time ago that's not from your short neshama, he will come down to you. There was a famous story. There was a rabbi called Rav Shmuel, time of the Ariya Kadosh. He walked inside the Ariya, he, he wrote a book called Midrash Shmuel. He came inside the Ariya Kadosh, the Ariya Kadosh stood up for him. Ariya Kadosh, you know what Ariya Kadosh is stand up for you is? That's like Moshe Rabbein. Ariya Kadosh, Moshe Rabbein is neshama. That's oh, really? how He stood up for him. Uh, so Rav Chaim Vital, his student said, well, how come you're standing up for him? He said, you didn't see with him came the neshama of Rabbi Pinchas ben Yair? He said, no, I didn't see. He says, yeah, with, he has the neshama of Rabbi Pinchas, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's father-in-law is inside of him right now. God, what did he do? He, he ran after it. Yeah, he, 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 Ari, Ari saw, the Ari saw. He ran after Rav Chaim Vital ran after him. He said, what, what mitzvah you did? What mitzvah did you do? Tell me, what did you do today? Mama Asecha. I don't know. What did I do? What did I already do? I worked filin today. I answered 90 amens. I said 100 brachot. I answered 10 kadishim. I did 4 kiddushas. What did I already do? I did the same thing that everyone does. No, you did a specific mitzvah today. I tell you, I made a mitzvah today. I heard, when I was walking to shul, I heard some people crying inside a house. Just out, he, he knocked on the door and he said, What's going on? Over here? Robbers came and said, I stole everything from them. Even the, they were wearing pajamas. They don't even have clothes to wear. He said, I took off my clothes. I gave the father my clothes. Go, he should go find. It says Rabbi? Yeah, this Rabbi, Rav Shmuel, Rav Shmuel Ozida, his name was. I made a chesed. I took off my own clothes. I gave it to him. I went home. I'm, that's why you see I'm dressed in the clothes of Shabbat. I gave him the clothes off my back. There was a rabbi in the Gemara, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai's father-in-law, Rabbi Pinhas ben Yair. That's the mitzvah he used to do. Rabbi Pinhas says, now I understand. That's why you were zochet to the Ibur Neshama, Rabbi Pinhas ben Yair. It's not his Neshama. It's not his Shoresh. But he was zochet to move his Neshama at higher levels. We were learning in Shara Gilgulim this past uh, Sunday, yesterday, yesterday, we learned that a person could change his Shoresh Neshama. You could change who you are. You could get to a different level. You could be zochet to more neshamot. You could be zochet to more mitzvot. You could be zochet to more olam haba. A person passes after 120 years. We have to be honest with each other, guys. Either you believe in olam haba or you don't. If you don't believe in olam haba, throw in the hat. You have nothing to do in here. If you don't believe in olam haba, forget it. You have nothing to do over here. But you say you can change it yourself. I'm, that's what I'm trying to teach you guys right now. If you believe in olam haba, I'm telling you guys right now, you could get to the front, front row. section, front row in front of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Oh. If you, how are you gonna be zochet to that? If you're gonna accept it find yourself, and you're gonna be consistent in the mitzvot, consistency. I'm telling you something crazy. I'm telling you something Goyim tell you, Lavdil. If a person wants to work out, lose weight, gain muscles, what does he have to be? He has to be consistent. I'm telling you, use that. I said, they didn't get the wheat. They got it from us. You have to use that chokhmah for yourself. Be consistent. You, you dedicate yourself to a shiur Torah, even if you have a party that night. I remember when I was more than 10 years ago. I was dating my wife and I used to go to a shiur in Williamsburg. I think it was every Wednesday night we used to go to shiur and Shara Kavanot in Williamsburg. And I used to go over there and one night my, the, the Rebbe said over there, uh, the, my wife said, uh, my, my cousin's uh, 
I said to myself, my eyes, listen, I have a shiur, but you know, it's my, it's my future wife over there. I was engaged to her already. I said, no, it's, you know, you know, this is, this is my future. I got to go to the Khan Hori. When I came the next week to the, see the Rebbe over there, you know how angry he got at me? I guarantee you everybody over here would never go to that shiur ever again. That's how angry he got at me. You mean face to face? Face to face. When I came the next week to him, he, where were you? It's a shiur kavua, he said. You must come to the shiur. You have to break all the satans to come to the shiur. And it makes you higher in the nishama. When I got married, Rabbi Isai, when I got married, when I was dating my wife, Akhula, I used to wear jeans. What was the difference? Jeans, no jeans. What's the big deal? It's a, it's a pair of pants, for the love of God. That's the way I saw it. I don't know. Now, remember, guys, I'm not telling you guys what to do. I'm telling you a personal story right now. Personal story. Don't, don't get offended. Don't get offended, exactly. Don't so I used to go to the Rebbe Street and I asked the Rebbe, I said to him, I said to him, come be an Ed in my wedding. I want a kosher Ed. I want a Chazak Ed. I said, I, I told him. He says, he says, Shalom. Shalom. Bar Yochai, he used to say. He was Syrian. Bar Yochai. He said, you promised me never to wear jeans again. I looked at him. I said, what's the difference? Jeans, no jeans. It's pants, for the love of God. And I said, it's comfortable, to tell you the truth. Today, I can't wear it for the from, from my life. I, I can never fit myself. <laughs> Whatever the case is, I can't wear it. And it's, no, I'm not, I'm not going to wear it anyways. But the point is, he said, make a nether, Eliyahu, he said. Make a nether. You're never going to wear it again in your life. I said, you're serious? He said, yes, you're never going to wear it again. I said, I make, I didn't say business. I said, give him a handshake. I'm never going to wear it again in my life. And he came to my wedding to be an ed. And ever since that day, I never wore it. And you know what? I, be, I tell you the truth. It changed my life. Really? It changed my, uh, did my ashkafa. Did he tell you the reason why? No, I didn't have to. I lived it. Rabbi I lived the reason. I lived. The Rebbe said it. You did it. I never, ever bothered my Rebbe. In my life, I never bothered him with questions, with this, with hashkafa. Whatever he said, I did he said to come 12 o'clock at night to Tikkun, I used to come. I used to foresee this guy over here, I used to take him with me. I said, come! One more time. With him, with one time, with him. I used to take other guys, every Friday, Shavavim, fast, Tikkunim, Ta'aniyot. Every Friday we used to go, no questions asked. Why? I was looking for spirituality. I was looking to be close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I was looking for Hashem. He is in the light? He's still alive, he moved to Tzfat. Oh, that's he moved to Tzfat. Yeah, he moved to Tzfat. He's not here anymore. He moved. I still got his coins. He still got, yeah, remember those coins? Remember, in, in, uh, in Purim, remember he was throwing those coins? Rabbi Isai, if you want Hashem, Tamur U, Gabriel. Taste and see Kitov Hashem. Hashem is good. How much I tell you guys, Rabbi Isai, last week I said something big. I don't know if you guys realized it. You want to be a Tzadik? Tzadik. 90 amens. Four Kedushas, ten Kaddishes, a hundred Berachot. But let's say you can't be a Tzadik. At least have Tzedakah. What's Tzedakah? Ninety Amens, four Kedushas, Chamisha Chumshei Torah. Learn Torah that day and a hundred Berachot. You can't make every Minyan. At least learn Torah that day. We have a big problem in our days. What's our big problem? Everybody today has to be Rabbi Vadi Yosef. You have to learn halakha and be Bet Yosef and tour and learn Gemara, Gemara. What happened to that guy that used to learn Chokli Israel? What happened to that guy that used to learn Yalkut Ma'am Lois? What happened to that guy who used to learn Mishnah? What happened to those guys? Those guys used to be more Yerei Shamayim than us. That's the Satan making you crazy. The, 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 the um, Turkey Avot says, Hamakirat Mekomo. A person has to know his place in life. Yeah. You have to know your job. I'm going to tell you something crazy right now. I didn't even say the Hagdashot yet. I have to say the Hagdashot. They have to forgive me, the sponsors. But don't worry, they're in there. <laughs> the, 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 the Gemara says, a person who just learns Torah, Ashrav. He's blessed in life. All his life he learns Torah, Kol lo, Ashrav. Ashrei Yoishrei Veiseicha. Oh, the Aleluha said. But a person who learns Torah and also works, if you earn the food from your own 
hands. Hands, ashrecha. You get the ashre yoshre, v'tov lach. It's also good for you. It's also good for you in this world. Do you know the co- everybody over here standing in this in this uh, place over here? You have ashrei and tov. You have two things in your life. You have it's a, it's it's a kedusha to have some. You know, Rabbi Yochanan Sandlar, Rabbi Yochanan, the the Harusa Rabbi Akiva. Well, he was a, he was a sandlar. Rabbi Eliezer Agadol, Rabbi Eliezer. He had farms. He had people working for it. He he had. I mean, he inherited it, but still, he had a whole um, thing going on for him over there. Uh, who else? Rav Huna was a winemaker. Rav Papa was a beer maker. Beer. But what's the pshat? This is what kids don't understand. And if they're hearing this, listen very carefully. You don't have to work 24-7. That's the mistake. All you need to do is to work. If you have a pipe... Hashem gives you the pipe. First, you need a pipe. What's your pipe? Your, your job. Oh, you're a feminist over here. <laughs> <laughs> your, 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 your pipe is your job. Your avodah. What makes the pipe shine is your wife. I'll give you that one. But the pipe is your job. It's your avodah. But if you going to work, you're supposed to make a certain amount of money. But you're working extra. What are you basically doing? You're just making another hole in the pipe. Mm-hmm. But it's the same pipe. It's the same water that's going to come out. Anyways. It's going to come out the same thing anyways. Yeah. You have to be kovea itim latora, boy, say. I remember. I never forget this. Who was with me over there? Were you with us over there? Oh, I think Michael was with us over there. Remember we went to Bnei Brak? Once upon a time, we went to see Rav Chaim Kanievsky. Yeah. You guys went to the show? No, me, my father, and Michael, we went. And we, we were there 12 o'clock. All the stores are closed. We want to buy a, co- a, a bottle of Coca-Cola. We're thirsty. All the stores are closed. 12 o'clock in the afternoon, for the love of God. Everything is closed. In but, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. It's but neighbor. that's not the point of neighbor. The point is, and guess what? The, where is the biracha? Everybody over there has apartments. It's the most expensive, one of the most expensive cities in Israel. Mm-hmm. Between a house and another house in Bnei Brak, what do you have? A house. Everything of... And everybody has their bracha. The Torah tichayeh ba'aleah. Now, we're in the weeks of Shovavim. I was learning, and I say this Shovavim, every Shovavim I say this. B'shut Miriam HaKovezet in the Balatanya. The Balatanya was the student of the Magad Memizrich. Remember we went to the Magad Memizrich? Remember in Ani Poli we went over there? He, uh, 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 the Magad Memizrich is the student of the Baal Shem Tov. When the and we went, I remember when we went to Ukraine in Hadich. First stop we went was Hadich. I never forget out of all the Kvarim we went over there, the Baal Tanya Skever. Wow, it was like it was at night. It was at night we went over there. It was like uh, a million bombs were going on. It was such a hit order route over there. More if you that. go inside that place over there, Mamash, you get a hit order route. An awakening of Akadosh Baruch Hu. He died over there running away from Napoleon. What happened was, the big rabbis in Ukraine, the Talmidei Baal Shem Tov, they had a machlokis. Do we want Napoleon or we don't want Napoleon? Who's better, the Tsar of Russia or Napoleon? Neither. At that moment, who was better? The Tsar or Napoleon? What's the Nafkamina? That's that's the question you're supposed to ask. The Tsar. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Tsar was Republican, but he was against Judaism. <laughs> Napoleon was a liberal, but he was pro Judaism. What's better? To have somebody that's against all the Toevas, but he's against people being Jewish or to have somebody that's a ag- that's pro openness you know, I don't have to explain to you guys all the shtuyot freedom exactly Napoleon was the father of these things but you could be you want to be Jewish Bahal. Bahal. have a Sanhedrin he had a Sanhedrin by the way yeah oh. for sure He's the head of his Sanhedrin of David uh, I don't want to say I think Oppenheim was his name but don't quote me of David something he was a big Dol Hador. 
He was head of his Sanhedrin. Napoleon had a Sanhedrin. <laughs> he wanted to build the base of Mikdash. Napoleon. Napoleon wanted to build. He was this short, like this. Yeah. Five foot four, something like that. He was very small. Head. Mamash, like, uh, you can't even imagine. Who's better, Napoleon or the Tsar? The rabbis, the Admorium in Poland said, we want uh, Napoleon. In Poland. We want Napoleon. We want to have freedom to be Jewish. The Balatanya in Russia, he was under the Tsar. He said, I want the Tsar. I'd rather learn Torah through uh, all Yisurim, but as long as I know that the Jewish people learning Torah. How do you say by Paro? The more they punish them, the more they, the more they multitude. That's the more they multiply. That's what it says by the parasha. If Yosef Hatzadik's brothers didn't sell him, he would never have been king. Rabot machashavot berev ish. You think you're gonna circumvent the dream, Hashem says. But it's the fa- exactly the fact that he told you the dream. You're gonna make him king. You made him into the king. Paro said, "Oh, I see their uh, Mashiach." He's going to be born. He's going to be drowned in the water. That day, he didn't know if he's going to be Egyptian. Why? He saw that he's Jewish. He also saw that he's Egyptian. He didn't understand that he's a Jew that's growing up in his house. In his own house. He did, in his own house. Could you imagine everybody there at Sipsio? Over there, one good-looking, uh, tanned. You know, Moshe Rabbeinu was a very handsome man. He was he was tall. He was strong. He knocked at the Egyptian with one. The Peshat of the Pasuk. That's the Peshat of the Pasuk. He knocked at the Egyptian with one smack. You know what kind of power that is? To knock out a Schwarza with one smack? He had to have been one uh, serious. And uh, by the way, Mashiach Tzitkenu has to be the same thing. Mashiach can't be a five foot four. Uh, uh, he could be a big Talmud Chacham, but he has to have. A king must have all. It says in the Medrash, Moshe Rabbeinu was a Melech. Yosheva la Kiseh. He was a king that, s- that sat on the Kiseh. Yoshua Binun, which one of the, if I'm not mistaken, one of the, um, one of the, th- they, they uh, gave for the, for the Shi'ur, Lishot Yoshua Binun, he was a Melech, Yosheva Lakise. When he said something, they were afraid of him. They did it. That's the power of the Yesod. A person has to be like this. When you have the power of the Yesod, you say something, and they do it. You want to be a boss? You gotta keep the yesod. If you keep the yesod, you're gonna be a successful boss. The Balatanya was afraid of the Napoleon. He said, Jews can't handle liberalism. Jews can't handle freedom. If you give them a hand, they take the, the arm. Well, that was the reason he was running for him. That's why, and Napoleon, he... You see, the Russians, these guys are they're kamikaze fighters. Also with, I don't want to say his name, the age, the age guy, the one with the small, I don't, I said, I don't want to say his name. I said, I don't want to say with a G, with an H, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear anything from his name. Schmittler. I like that. Schmittler. Like this, this is better. I don't want, I don't want to hear his name. After that, I can't have Kavanah and Kriyat Shema Lamita. It's Klippa. It's a Klippa. Understand? Just for the name? Yeah. Wow. When the Russians, when, first of all, you know, I don't want to say his, uh, another name, the S word, you know him, the one who killed 50 million people? Shuri. Uh, Shuri, yeah. <laughs> when he was, uh, first he made a deal with the, the other guy. <coughs> you know that, right? Um, Historically, they, they divided, had a deal. They divided whole Europe. They, they divided Poland. Mm. You know, Poland is huge, right? Oh, they divided Poland in half. The guy with the big mustache said, I'll take the east. You said, he said, I'll take the west. Hashem made by such chokhmah, for some reason, the small mustache guy attacked the Russian guy. That was the beginning of his end. He wasted so many soldiers. Now, the Russians, they don't care. They will die. Just not to lose. Their pride is so strong, the Russians. They will die, not in how many Russians died in World War II? Yeah. Between 25 to 50 million, just not to lose the war. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand the, 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 the suicide they went through? 
Therefore, but one thing is good about them. They're very, today, Putin fined uh, Google a hundred million, I don't know, was it a million or billion? I don't know, anybody billion. knows? He fined them like an ex extraordinary amount of money. Why? Why are you doing Levy uh, commercials in Google? You know what Levy means, rainbow. I don't want to say the word. He fined them fruit in Russia, cakes. Google. Fruitcakes. Fruit cakes. Fruit cakes. Mm -hmm. You cannot, they cannot, they cannot, uh, in, in Russia, Google cannot uh, show anything they want over there. He you find them. Big the amount, they throw it. Yeah, he doesn't care. And say he's a religious Jew. Say he has peot in a kippah. doesn't have any of that. He, he's a religious man. He has ideology. That's why the Balatanya said, i rather give him my support than give the other guy my support you know what came out of napoleon democrats napoleon was the father of democracy in america in america reform compare he wasn't sorry he was religious compared to them but he's the father of that all the first clipot came out of where france france was the biggest clipot now, I'm going to tell you some Divrei Torah in the name of the Balatanya Kadosh. One small thing, we're in the Shobavim right now, and we're going to end with this. Before we're going to end, our Shi'ur is sponsored by the Shota Shimono family for being constant supporters of Torah. Yisrael Ben Lea, Michal Batchana, Yosef Chaim, Avigail, Tamay, Lisheva Chana, Sarevka, Bnei. Michal and also Yunishmat Rena Bat uh, Bat uh, Esther, I believe. And also our Shiu is sponsored La Hatzlachat Yoshua Ben Mazal Neria Ben Sveta Shlomo Ben Adina Moshe Ben Nela Moshe Maizeh Ben Nela Sarai Chazara Bichuva. Say Amen! Yochevet Ariela Bat Nela Rufa Shlema Lo Osnat Ben Miriam and Menachem Ben Mazal Mazal Ben Osnat Esther Bat Mazal Rufa Shlema Larisa Lea Bat Lea Lida and Frida Bat Lena Lea. Shem Shachlai Mufash, Mutor, Korea, Moser, Hensor, Amar, Amen, and Les Lachad, Yoshua, Binun. Huh? I don't understand sign language, John. I love you, but like, I'm not with you over here in this one. Anyways, Soda Kapara. I'm going to tell you guys a secret now. I learned when I was in his kever, this book was, was uh, published on uh, my birthday. The day I was born, this book was published. The same year or no? The same year, same year yeah. Oh, yeah. Same. same day. Alright, so we're the same age. Me and this book are the same <laughs> age. We can celebrate our birthday together. It says over here, what's one of the biggest things that stop religious Jews from serving Hashem? Bad thoughts. Why? Let's be honest, we're not in Mea Sharim. We go to the city. Who needs the city? You go to Austin Street, you have all the Klipot over there. Forget about Austin Street. You walk in uh, sometimes in Main Street. You can have over there. Uh, so, anyways, he says over here. Gdolim, a person they when they have bad machshavot Eliyahu, Hashem they really don't need machshavot Rabot. They don't have any taava for that. For them machshavot they don't. They don't, uh, what does Hashem call a tzaddik in the book of Isaiah? Saris. You know what each other Saris? Uh, Saris means a guy who doesn't have a breed. Uh, he doesn't even have a breed. He, uh, he's, he's, and he, he has no ta'ava. He's nothing. So in the book of Isaiah, it says over there, to the Sarisim, to the Sarisim, remember Shabbos. The Ariya Kadosh, what does it mean? Ariya Kadosh is telling Isaiah to tell the tzaddikim, at least be with your wife on Shabbos. If you don't have a taiva during the week, at least be on Shabbos. Have Yeladim Tzadikim. That was first based on Migdash. Just to give you a... Just some kind of... What, what were they? Today, were their Akavaim da Akavaim. Were the heels of their heels. And by the way, in Shamaim, they're jealous of our generation because we will bring Mashiach. Not them. Amen! They... I love you. We will bring the Mashiach Tzidkenu. They will not bring it. They couldn't bring it. We will bring it. We gotta flip it. Batuach? Batuach. Batuach. But doesn't mean you gotta stop your life. You gotta work, you gotta bring kids, you gotta do what you gotta do. That's the problem. You know why? Today I was talking to a kid in my class 
Mashiach is coming. I heard a shear of a rabbi another seven years, another Shemitah cycle. So I said to him, what do you want to do now? No, we got to talk about the Mashiach. I said, you want to bring Mashiach? Finish school, make some money, get married and have kids. You're going to bring Mashiach. Stop living in clouds. Mashiach is going to come. All you got to do is be ready. You're going to pack your bags and go. You're ready for that? That's it. Don't worry about everything else. That's the Yeradim Shem Meshugayim Barosh. They got, uh, uh, if you have Tzara'at, yes. If you have Tzara'at. If you have, you gotta have, you gotta, I remember, can I tell you something crazy, Ephraim? When I was in college, the year was, uh, no, before that. Two, uh, it was an auspicious year, Tavshin Samech, Tavshin Samech, 20 years ago. I was in the I was in a year in college when the rabbis were saying Mashiach was good. I think it was Tavshin Samech. I don't know. We say it was a it was a very auspicious year. Ten years maybe, not more than no. About ten, 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 ten years ago. Ten years ago. Come on, you can't be born. Oh, you guys, uh, I don't look that old for you. You made me compliment over here. Michael, I thought you said twenty years ago you were eleven. Just because you know my Z doesn't mean you gotta spill the beans. Okay. Anyways, I was inside the in college, and the rabbis were saying Mashiach was in school. You guys probably weren't even thinking about that. He had even no idea that what, what was going on. I, I, I'm always, I'm a Mashiach hunter. I know all the news, all the everything before it comes. I'm looking for these things. To either prove it or disprove it. But I have a book called, I'm going to say to you the name of the book. Mishari Megid. This book was written by a guy, by a tzaddik, called Rabbi Yosef Tzvi Bernfeld. He had a Magid. He lived in your time. He had a maggid, like the Beit Yosef had a maggid. Angel. An angel, angel in the Torah, he had a maggid. It's like Ruach HaKodesh. Like Ruach, yeah, a very low yeah. level of Ruach HaKodesh, but it's Ruach HaKodesh. Okay. And in this book, it says over there, Mashiach was supposed to come in the year Tavshin Samech. Where Tavshin pay bet. 21 years ago, Mashiach was supposed to come. The maggid told them this. That year is Gematria Kanfen Nisharim, the wings of eagles, and it didn't come. I was listening to a shura of Meir Shmueli, the brother of Benayahu Shmueli. He said, I remember that year all the Mekubalim in Yerushalayim were buying new clothes from Mashiach Tzitkenu. They were ready, Mamash, Mashiach was supposed to be mid Galeb, because the Navi Zechariah says, Pitom Yavo, Pitom, the Mashiach is supposed to go by Pitom Yavo. It's supposed to come like. Like you're not gonna like how Yosef came out of the yeah, pit, like that, boom. So, boom! Like yeah, he just came out. That's how much Yosef supposed to come. Wow. Wow. So like, the signs mean nothing, you know? Sign the signs already are in Midgalef from two thousand years ago. Every generation, the signs are in Midgalef. You understand? The signs don't mean nothing. He's supposed to come with the Birurim Ardan. The sad thing is, Rav Salman Mutsafi, who was Rav Bintio Mutsafi's uh, father, he's alive today. Rav Salman Mutsafi was the student of Rabbi Udafdaye. And his student was Rav Tzion Bracha, who came out with the yeshiva Lishem, which our yeshiva is named after him. Whenever our yeshiva, our shul goes through a tough time, I go to Israel, I dive in by his kever, Lishem. He said, I don't care about dates, I don't care about nothing, Mashiach will come and he's supposed to come. I know Mashiach is going to come in the year 5,000. 999 right if the latest time right before we say Achot Ketana before the year 6000 in Rosh Hashanah oh, Before God. that I don't care about nothing I will daven I will do whatever I have to do Before that none of these dates matter of Salman Mutsafi used to say Musafi In Iraqi Musafi Yeah I'm saying that day that Pit Omi Abu Adam Before that I'm saying it Dates are dates Kol I like that That's what uh, yeah, that means that's one person who think I shouldn't buy a house over here, I shouldn't live my life, I shouldn't make a business, live your life, make a business. Just be ready. When the Adon comes, be ready to go. And don't worry, the prophet Isaiah says, Yishaya Navi says, in the last Geula will be 50 times the first Geula. Mm -hmm. That means when we left Mitzrayim, we left with gold and jewelry, every human being could have built a Mishkan. 
He could have built his own mishkan. You know how expensive a mishkan was? <laughs> just the it was, it was just, just the arona, just the menorah. Forget the kapor, just the menorah. Solid gold. Imagine how much everyone could have built his own menorah. Everyone will here will have 50 times that amount. The Navi Isaiah says, the goyim will take you on their shoulders. They say, come, let us take you to Yerushalayim. Bitcoin makes sense. You understand? So Bitcoin makes sense, you're saying right now? Now that, no now, now that we're saying that the numbers make sense, you're saying. Okay. <laughs> so let's uh, read a little bit of the Balatanya right now. Balatanya says, when a person has machshavot ra'ot, why, why am I telling you this? Back in the day, I thought Mashiach was going to come. And every day we're supposed to leave Mashiach. That's the, our problem. We shouldn't think Mashiach is going to come now. He's not going to come later on. It's not our problem to know when he's going to come, how he's going to come. We do our avodah in this world. We do our avodah. When, exactly. Eliyahu, when the avodah will be done. When the rapach nitzotzot, when the 288 sparks will be done. Then he's going to come. How it's going to be done. Uh, getting married and having children. Mm, lots of them. That's it. A lot of success. And Only so this. All the manufacturer of the birth pool controls, they hold back Mashiach. According to what you're saying. Technically speaking. It's the pharmacist that The pharmacist. Ah! Oh, oh, Eliel! Oh, 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 it says over here that uh, the Balatanya, Satima, you know, the, the, the Balatanya says over here, it says over here, the moment that Ben Adam mevakesh mechilat ched va'avon me'et ha-kadosh baruch hu, chayav ha-kadosh baruch hu limchol lo. The moment you ask Hashem for forgiveness, at that moment, Ephraim, Hashem forgives you. There is no suffix, says the Balatanya, there is no suffix. Question. There is no question. The moment you say, "Slach lanu avinu ki chatanu, mechol lanu malkenu ki fashanu, ki ekel tov v'sadakad abruchat Hashem hanun hamarbe lisloa," at that moment Hashem forgives you. The infinite, Ha'en Sof Baruch Hu, has no problem for forgiving any other. Elama to reveal Hakadosh Baruch Hu, a person must go through Yisurim, so through suffering. The Gemara says a person puts his hands inside his pocket. Instead mm. of taking it out, he wants a quarter. He takes out a dime. That's Yisurim. Person stubbed his toe. That's big Yisurim. <laughs> uh, like Your kids leave the small toys on the floor and you step Ooh. on it. Wow, that's not Yisurim. That's Im Imosha Yisurim over there. The Yisurim. But the smart guy says the shem yehukushar rabo shchinte ze yisurim mechaprim avon. He has to know gamzu letova. If you live in 108 Street, it's easier. Why 108 is gematria gamzu letova? Gehenom. Every and also that mechaper gehenom ze mechaper gehenom. When you everything over there has to be gamzu letova. However, we live over here in Main Street. Main Street, it's Rashi Tevod Man. Man, Mayinu Kuvin. We're over here, we're bringing up the Tfilot in the Torah over here. By the way, Mekubalim, before they moved, before a person moves to a street, a new thing, yeah, they always check the number of the street. They check the, yeah, they check the address. Why? The numbers play a difference. So 78th Avenue was 78th Avenue is a, a avenue with a lot of blessing. Yeah. Why? 78th, the three, there's a Havaya over there, there's a Havayot. Yeah. Why? Okay. Yeah, over there's three Havaya. Havaya, Havaya, 26 plus 26 is how much? 52. And then how much another? 62, 72, and plus another 6, 78. Mm. 3 times Havaya is 78. Yosef is 6 times Havaya. 3 Chasadim and 3 Givurot. But the 3 Chasadim is 78. You understand? In the number 78 is Chashmal. What's a Chashmal? Chashmal. 378. Your clothes are called Hashmal, by the way. Your clothes, the Benishchai has a tefillah. L'shem yechud kutshav rabu shchinte hareni ba lilvosh levush sehu be'en Hashmal. Your clothes are a Hashmal. That's why the Benishchai says don't ever wear tight clothes. 
If you wear a tight clothes, you're ruining your chashman. What's chashman? Chashma is a special uh, aura makif that you have aura. on top of you. It's your oh, special so aura. It ruins your uh, your kid. No, it's not. Yeah, he's good. He's over good. There. He's good. Yeah, he's good. Sure. There's a lot of. If you wear a tight clothes, also the Rav Nachman of Breslov says this. By the way, in the Kutei Mora, I remember learning this. Tight clothing ruins your chashman. <laughs> So Sipsio, they're doing it right? Sipsio, no, they're, they're doing it wrong, I think. No, they, they, no, they are very bad. It's right. tight, but it's low. Oh, it's yeah, it's low, exactly. <laughs> they're, trying, they're trying to go around it. They're trying to go around, but they're not going to make it. <laughs> I'm never going to forget I was, I, was, I was going to school. And I got into a bus, and the bus driver told me, how come they're always looking that they're going to the bathroom over there? I said, I don't know. You asked them. I have no idea over here. <laughs> never forget that. He's a Trump supporter. He was a Trump supporter. <laughs> so anyways, the Balatanya says, a person who has bad machshavot from Hashem Idbach, he doesn't want them, but it comes to him. He needs three things. When the bad machshava comes to you, it's really because Hashem wants you to fix it. In that bad machshava, yes, Gabriel, inside that machshava is a nitzotz kedusha. You have to you have to break it, rip it open, and take out the good spark. It's called hachnaa of the lamb. But at time it gives us a chidush. Nobody in our generation is in that level. To get bad machshavot. Yes. Because to fix them. Ah, to fix them. To fix them. What's the point? You know why you get bad machshav? You know why you get machshavot? Because the food. Because of the food that you eat. Mm. That's why it says watch the watch what you eat. Watch what she eat. Our level of our generation, you know, and it's worth it to come to the shir, just listen to the sentence. We could fix all of our ta'avot from our ochel. Everything comes from our ochel. And I say this, you know, I may say this a million times in my shiori. All of our ta'avot is from our ochel. The Balatanya says this in Nigeria the Shuba. Listen to me very carefully. When a person watches his diet, his machshava is on another level. That's why the Balatanya says, when the bad machshavot come to you, don't feel bad. Why? You caused them to happen to you. You did it to yourself. What's the secret? Don't eat before you go to sleep. Don't eat food that heat up your body. The Kohen Gadol, before he used to go to the Kodesh and Kodashim, they wouldn't feed him eggs, cheese, red wine. No. Uh, white wine they wouldn't give him white wine any food that, that those specific ones but they wouldn't give him any food that would heat up his body why because you have no control over that once you put it inside your body you can't control it that's why shabbat rabbi say you know shabbat is supposed to be our most special day but it happens to be shabbat turns into our what lachaim you know what the problem is we stuff ourselves too much on shabbat Oh, that's not food? a mitzvah, that's not Onik Shabbat. Hello, it's not Onik Shabbat. But it's a punish. Yeah. <laughs> Shabbat is supposed to be a very spiritual time for you. But some people, their tikkun is on a Sunday. Sunday. If you stuff yourself too much Saturday, Saturday night, so that should be Shit Marave Malka, then your whole Sunday goes to. And if your Sunday goes wrong, your whole week goes wrong. Amen. So therefore, a person. The, by the way, the whole uh, Gavriel could attest to this, right? How much he, he makes a uh, uh, puts an exclamation point on a person's diet. A person's food should be bigdusha v'tara. Unfortunately, in our generation, we have a lot of shtuyot that goes inside our body. A lot of shtuyot. When a person eats correctly, by the way, the Ramban, the Ramban, Nachmanides. How many years before Balatanya is? Five hundred years, six hundred years, Nachmanides. He writes over there, a person wants to have good kids, before he's with his wife, don't eat. Mm. It's in his book, Igir Don't eat? Don't, don't eat food. Before you're with your wife, don't eat food. <laughs> don't eat your food. Go in there. Not What galodni? What's galodni? What? what? what galodni? I know a woman and her husband. Look at me, Ariel. I know a woman and her husband. 20 years older than you. They fasted for three days straight in the wind in the summer. I know. Why? Too fast before we have kids, Kira? Forget about kids. I'm just letting you know. The power. The power of the goof. If you think your goof doesn't have koach, you're making a mistake. Your goof has a lot of koach. We're lazy. For a 12-hour fast that I give you guys on a Friday, I have to beg you guys to come. 
for Shavavim. Beg you guys, and I'm afraid to call you guys. I think it's low. Twelve hours. What's twelve hours? It's a joke. Twenty-four hours. That's something. Forty-eight hours. That's already bekoach uh, dikdusha. The babasalia kadosh. It's not even twelve. But twelve b'shaot zmaniot. The babasalia kadosh used to used to fast six days straight. And then you're gonna ask me a question: How he gave brachot? How you think he gave brachot? No the man was a walking angel. Fast six days. Six straight. days straight, and every day he used to dip in an ice mikvah. Yeah, straight. From ice maker. From, 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 from small age he did it. Was it? From small age his brother stopped him, right? He was like, oh, yeah. Hashem in Do you understand? No, no pardrugom. After three days, no. Yeah, but the Chachamim say it's a mistake to think that in our generation we don't have that power. You have that power. We don't want to do it. We don't want it. We're lazy. You understand? We have that koach. We're in Shavavim right now. We're in Shavavim right now. The least that I could ask from you guys to make Tikkunim, you don't need Misha Berach, Zuchule, yes, it's good stuff, all that stuff. You guys have that power to do that for yourself. Read Tihilim every day. Take upon yourself Shtayim Mikra Vachad Targum Ele Shemot Vaera El Hashem Shimirat Enaim. Parashat Bo, Bo El Paro. What's Bo? Abba, be an Abba inside the house. Bishalach paro keriat yamsu. All these things you could be at home. I'm gonna tell you a small story and we're done with this. The Rashash student was the Torah Chacham. Nefchaim de la Rosa. Nefchaim de la Rosa, Zichotre Agiare, no, Amen. Amen. His book is so strong, the Torah Chacham, we don't even learn it. It's so mepulpal. Deep. Deep. Very deep. Very deep. Torah Chacham. We learn it, but we don't pass him. A Torah Chacham, he had a son-in-law that died at a young age. Son-in-law and a grandson that died at a very young age. From a machala. During the machala, of Chaim de la Rosa was crying. After he died in the, in the shiva. In the shiva. He was crying. And they asked him, Rav Chaim, Rav Chaim, Rav Chaim, why are you crying? He said, why do you think I'm crying? Because I lost my grandson? He said, I'm not crying because of that. I'm crying because when my grandson, when, when, his, when his parents used to go out to work, my grandson needed somebody to change his diapers. And I was, he was a gdolador. He was the student of the main student of Rashash. I used to watch my grandson at home and change his gdolim. When he used to do chutz mikvotchem. You guys know what I mean. The mitzvah that I'm going to miss right now of the chesed to change my grandson's titulim, his diapers, chutz mikvotchem, I'm crying because of that. I won't have chesed. You know who's Rav Chaim de la Rosa? Him, the Rashash and the Chida could have brought Mashiach together. They, they wanted to. It's a famous story. I'm not going to tell you this right now. That's what he was crying for. How many chesed opportunities we have at home. We have a problem with this generation. We think everything is bitul Torah. We talk to our friend, give him an up me, you know, to pick him up, it's bitul Torah. We learn Chokli Israel, it's bitul Torah. Dafa Yomi is bitul Torah. Mishnah Yomi is bitul Torah. Everything is bitul Torah today. Going to work is bitul Torah. What, what, what bitul Torah? What are you talking about? Where did our parents come from? Where did our grandparents come from? Where, what do you think they got the area Shamayim from? From going out there in the world. We have to learn from the old generation. Ask your elders, ask your grandparents. They will tell you who you are. And everybody over here may be Zivugadur. May the people who need to get married, may they stay married. Amen.